ladies and gentlemen, I know we're a little behind, but I promise you we're going to make up for it and some because we've got not one, but right now two pro wrestling stars from Wrestling Championship Entertainment. And later on, we'll have another star from Wrestling Championship Entertainment that is certainly no stranger to Sportswire Radio, but this is going to be worth it because these two wrestlers, when I think about in a lot of ways, the meat and potatoes of Wrestling Championship Entertainment, these two individuals would be those individuals. And also, on top of that, you might want to turn your radio yeah, down. All right. All right. That's okay, but I'm going to get back to what I was trying to say to introduce you guys because when I think about maybe one of the more emotional matches this year that this company had, it was that 16th anniversary match between the resident rock star Sean Jovi and Dark Fire. They have a special relationship. We're going to get into that plus much, much more. So, Rick Father Dear, I'm a sports Number one, go on a sports show. Pro wrestling stars here for a wrestling championship entertainment. That is the resident rock star, Sean Joby and Dark Fire. Gentlemen, how are we doing tonight? I'm doing fine, Reverend. How are you? I'm doing great. I, I appreciate you guys gave me some time because I know it's a big Thursday night football game on between the Packers and Titans, and certainly many of our friends here in Wrestling Championship Entertainment are certainly Green Bay Packers fans, and certainly I did admire the resident rock star Sean Jovi's Green Bay Packers deck of cards. I'll get into that later on for sure as well. But uh, gentlemen, great to be with you here on Sportswire Radio, and and I want to talk to the resident rock star, Sean Joby, first. Because I'll get into Dark Fire because certainly he's a part of a huge storyline as well. But, I mean, obviously it was the news that kind of rocked Wrestling Championship Entertainment just before our last show of the year that unfortunately you could not attend due to the unfortunate COVID-19 and certainly kind of a big bummer. And I think that things could very well be different here in WCE. But I got to talk for those who are listening and watching here on Sportswire Radio and Kind of how do we bounce back from that? How you feeling? And uh, certainly, uh, how did you like how things developed after that with uh, your unfortunate sickness and fight or fright day one and two? Well, I mean, the COVID thing was very unfortunate. And the worst part about it is my symptoms were bare minimal. I thought about taking the test and I was like, eh, I, I could have something. You never know. I got a couple of symptoms, a couple of coughs. And then it just ended up me having COVID with no symptoms, hardly at all. And I, and I had to tell the GM, look, I don't want to get you guys sick. I know I have a big opportunity, but I can't do that to you guys. So I so I stepped out of the match. JDT took the opportunity, took the reins, and ran with it. And I, I'm glad the right person for the job would be JDT. I, I do respect him as a competitor. He is... One heck of an athlete for a guy his size. Very admirable. Reminds me of a lot of myself, honestly. <laughs> big guys doing big things. Um, well, I mean, you said something interesting there, and I'll come back to Darkfire in a second. I mean, certainly we did a little bit touch upon the fact that JDT, this was his first singles championship in his 25-year career, and you're a big man, he's a big man, and I feel like I've heard everybody in the kitchen sink kind of throw something out there in terms of wanting JDT. And we even heard Craven Rage kind of talk about he feels the overconfidence factor that JDT has going for him. But, I mean, are you technically, I guess, the first guy in line to get a shot at this title because of what happened with you and everything else? I mean, I have to ask that pretty much. Um, I wouldn't say I'm the first in line. What happened was when I had to – had to forfeit my title shot because of COVID. I was promised a rain check of sorts that I can get a title match on whatever month. And I haven't decided when I want to do that yet, but in time I will probably know. And honestly, I'm hoping it's JDT when I decide to do it because I want a big match. And I think a big match feel would be me and him, potentially even a dream match for the guys on our sides. For guys our size, it would be a colossal match, and I really would like to be a part of that. Hopefully next year, and hopefully well, next year, well, I'm hoping. Well, 
I have to ask you, Sean Jovi. I mean, I hope the ring would be able to uh, stand after it. You and him in the ring. We're both over 300 pounds, man. man. I don't know. That ring scares me enough. Or whatever. All right, fair enough here, and certainly, Dogfire, I want to bring you into the into the fold here on Sportswire Radio for the first time. We're getting a chance to hear from you, and certainly, uh, I mean, it's kind of been the rage almost, literally, no pun intended, the Craven rage. I mean, Nicholas Crenson seems like he has it in for you. He seems like he's wanted to bring up a number of different things about your past, and certainly we saw mm-hmm. a little bit of that unfold. It's certainly a uh, fight or fright mm-hmm. here, this past show, our final show of the year here in Wrestling Championship Entertainment. So, I mean, how you doing? And, uh, I mean, how do you bounce back from all those things that uh, Crenson has thrown out there from you? <sighs> well, I just sit there and take it, I guess, and deal with it and whatever. <laughs> but if you just – but I always have to ask, and, and I want to give a shout-out to uh, Edward Jones, who's with us. I know Edward is also kind of trying to do his own thing in the wrestling world. But, I mean – I mean, to sit there and take it after some of the things that Crenson has put out there about you and basically and, you know, using your past and some of the things that have happened. I mean, to sit there and just take it. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, how many people could really say the same thing? Is it maybe because you're a humble man? Maybe you've shown humility. I mean, talk me through that. Talk to me about that. Um, <clears throat> well, Eventually, Krenzen will get what uh, is coming to him, and I'll eventually beat him in a match. Eventually, if that ever happens, I don't know. But <laughs> I uh, think you can. I know you can. He's a hard opponent, man, and he's a really oh, good wrestler. I beat him. I I know what it's like to be in the ring with Krenzen and Darkfire. And Craven Ray certainly uh, also got the best of him. So, I mean, Crenson's on a run, no question, that he had a big weekend, and he'll talk about his weekend, also his latest promo. But, I mean, I still feel like Dark Fire, you know, yes, you seem like a very humble man. You seem like a modest man. You do seem like you've turned over a new leaf, and, and I, I like you. So, I mean, I, I'm not going to go out and, Thank you, and talk about you. I'm not going to go out and talk about your past because, after all, I am a reverend at the end of the day. So, I mean, I have to certainly give you the benefit of doubt and all those things. But, I mean, I have to ask you, I mean, there's got to be something here throughout this offseason because we're not, we're not going to have any action here for a long time. And you got to almost want to want to go out there and say, you know what? Something's burning inside of me, and, and I can't let this guy say all the things he said about me. I mean, even if it's somewhere in a dark alley somewhere, you are dark fire after all. Yeah, pretty, yeah. Um... From the edge. Eventually, also, I'm going to say something. Yeah, it's bottling up all inside me right now. And I, I, I'm trying to think of what to say to Crimson. And- you got the Clark Kent look going for you right now. Maybe that's what it is. You got that Clark Kent with the glasses and almost, you know, I mean, I don't know if that's the uh, the point of that there. I'll I mean, become uh, Superman. Well, you might be. You certainly got superhero wrestling like skills here. And speaking of those that also have tuned in, one of the people that always talks about all the stuff we do on Sports Fire Radio and a big wrestling fan in his own right from Brooklyn, New York, in the neighborhood of Ditmas Park in Brooklyn, that is Anthony J. Finkel, who, by the way, is a big man in his own right. I think he's about six foot two, and maybe he could step in there one day for wrestling championship entertainment. He is, of course, the man behind. (laughs) I I think a lot of people. Challengers. Well, Anthony's a big man, and I think Anthony's still got a couple of punches left in him, and he's still got a couple of bumps he could take through his bump card, but uh, he is tuned in. He's going to kill me for saying this, but uh, he says hello from Brooklyn, New York. But, uh, hello, hello. The, the resident rock star, Sean Joby, I, I want to come back to you, obviously, and I do want to talk about the match because we have you with Dogfire. I, I think in some ways, as I had said in my introduction here, that I kind of think it might have been the most emotional match that WC had between you and dark fire and the 16th anniversary match. And I know we've spoke about it here a little bit in the past, but I mean, for those that are watching and listening, talk to me about the match afterwards and how much it meant to you to, to have dark fire, to be that opponent with you. It, it meant a lot. You see dark fire and I, we have an extensive past. Um, if you went on my YouTube channel, you could date it back to 2007. 
I watched one of your matches. I think there was like a match. It looked like it might have been been 1987 rather than 2000. You, you guys were like <laughs> out there like. I mean, I was born been... in '90. That's still before my time. All right, fair enough. I'm I'm born a, a few years before you, but I, I could remember some of the '90s. But the way that the camera and the video was shot, it could have been. Oh goodness! I, I was like that was my I point. was a high schooler with an extreme budget. I worked part time at a restaurant as a busboy on the weekends. Like I didn't wow, okay. do anything extravagant. Hey, well, listen, jo join the club. I mean, but, yeah, uh, right. you, know, but uh, you know, but but the match, I mean, talk about, you know, the opponent and, and dark mm -hmm. fire. And, and I, I know it meant so much to you in, in the oh, video yeah. package we saw. And just, you know, how much have you thought about that match since now that the off season's now been a little while? I've been reflecting, of course. Dark fire gave me a good match. And I'm very happy that match happened the way it did. Thank you. Because you. And I, Darkfire, have dreamed about doing something like this for years. Wrestling in a ring, one-on-one. -on -one, Indeed. Not on a trampoline, not on some dirty mattresses that we <laughs> Yeah. An actual 16 by 16 foot ring. And it was amazing. The match was awesome. We it connected right. And... and, and you know, you're my best friend, obviously. we It's no secret. We have a long history. But I wouldn't mind facing you again, obviously. I look forward to that. Down the road, of course. <laughs> I'm always open to it. And it, it did mean a lot. It meant a lot. It warmed my heart. It, it was big. WC has presented a lot of opportunities for people like me and Darkfire, and I can not be thankful enough for what they have done for him and I. Oh, absolutely. No question about that. And I actually want to plug a wrestling championship entertainment because if you like what you hear from WCE, please go over to WCEheat.com for more information. You also go to WCE Heat on Facebook to subscribe to the wrestling championship entertainment Facebook page. Also wrestling championship entertainment on YouTube where you can watch as much content as your heart desires and follow the likes of the resident rock star Sean Jovi and Dark Fire and my name is Tom Bryce, otherwise known as the Reverend Tom Bryce. I actually am a reverend, and I am actually here with Sean Jovi and Dark Fire. And, you know, Dark Fire, before I get to some comments here, I wanted to ask you, because I did hear what Sean Jovi had to say, and this is the first time I'm getting a chance to formally speak with you. And did you ever think, I don't know, 16 years ago or even six years ago that you and Sean Jovi would be able to have a match like the match that you guys had and also in a place – that has developed such a strong following in wrestling championship entertainment. I mean, talk to me about your thoughts on that. I, I never thought we would ever get to wrestle in the ring, but miracles happen, you know. <laughs> pretty, pretty much short street and to the point. And uh, let me get here that if Darkfire hadn't shaved his beard, he would have toasted Crenson. Click, click, boom. I mean, so... Was shaving the beard the right way to go, Dogfire? Was it the right way to go after all? Uh, I thought I, I I don't know what to, how to respond to that. <laughs> well, some, well, well, some people believe in superstition. Like famously, there was a legendary baseball player in the Hall of Fame, Wade Boggs, and before every game, he had to eat a piece of chicken or a bucket of chicken because that was like, if I don't do it, I'm going to go 0 for 4 and strike out four times. There was other pitchers. There was a guy that pitched for the Cubs and the Mets, Turk Wendell. Every time he went on the mound, he wouldn't touch the white line. He would have to jump over it with his cleats. There are just people that have Kevin Nash with somebody. Remember, he would jump and jump off the rope and he would kind of take his legs and there's just certain superstitions. So, I mean, maybe that point there from one of our friends is saying, if you had kept the beard or kept the facial hair, maybe you would be Cranston. I don't know. That's just one person's thought. That could be true. Maybe but, we both shaved our faces for our match. We yeah. want to look like we were in 2007 again. Well, I look like I'm in like 1907 with my facial hair, so I'm not one to talk. But Man. certainly, we'll, we'll come back to some of your history between the two of each other. And, I mean, the resident rock star, Sean Jovi, I want to ask you this question because I'd asked a wrestler I had on a couple days ago here on Sports Wire Radio kind of the same question now that we're getting ready to close out 2022 into 23. I mean, when you look back on your year in wrestling championship entertainment overall, how do you feel about the year and how it went for you? Um, it's a weird year. Very weird. Um, it's, I started the year, um, 
saying goodbye to my old backyard fed Ronas Championship Wrestling by doing that ceremony, retiring yeah. the IRCW title at Crowning Achievement. And that's where it started with. And then, uh, of course, coming up short in the Fatal 4-Way to crown the first in your state. I've come up pretty short for like the first half of the year. I started coming back. Then, of course, the Three Doors Now match with Craven. That kind of set me back. And then next thing I knew, the year was over, thanks to COVID. So it, it's, it was a really roller coaster year. But I wouldn't say it was necessarily bad or good. I would say it was an experience more than anything. And I would say that next year, I'm going to go bigger. Well, I, let me ask I you. I didn't go big enough, but hey, I'm going to go bigger next year and come out stronger than ever. Well, let me ask you a follow-up question. I'll ask the same question to Darkfire in a minute because, again, he had also a very colorful year, let me put it that way. But, I mean, does that give you motivation going into the offseason? Say, you know what? I didn't necessarily have the worst year of my career. I didn't have the best year of my career, and I certainly didn't get a chance to end the script the way I may have wanted to. So in a way, does it give you that extra motivation? Say, you know what? It's back to the drawing board. I got to do whatever I can these next four or five months to keep myself ready, keep myself locked in, to have that year that maybe I would have wanted to have had, especially maybe even at fight or fright day one or two. Give me your thoughts on that. Well, like I said, at the end of the opening season of WC, I went out with a bang and I defeated Craven. But like I said, again, the whole year was kind of wishy-washy throughout. But my goal for next year is to do better than I did last year. And that's how it's been every year in my backyard career. That's fair enough. Backyard, I mean, the many places I've been, that's always been my goal. Just be better than you were the year before. Put on a better performance. And this year was actually... Probably had some of my best performances I've ever had. The three door down match, especially as far as performances go. Well, if you look at it, leave aside the win loss record. I mean, your last two matches, Dark Fire and Craven Rage. I mean, right? I mean, I yeah. mean, you couldn't ask for two of the better matches that were in the year. I mean, these were, I would argue to say, two were probably the top, I don't know, seven matches, maybe six yeah. or seven matches in WCE. And, they always say in wrestling, they judge you based on your performance in the ring. As a wrestler that we're friends with you, that's currently a world champion in another company, and I won't say his name, and he always tells me, you know, Tom, it doesn't matter about wins and losses. It only matters about two things, how your performance was in that ring and if people liked what you did. So that's one way to look at it. So there you go. So that's somebody that uh, I would trust just like I trust you. And, you know, Dark Fire, I want to ask you the same question because you also had a really, really interesting year for a number of different ways. And and I kind of think that some people have told me also in the locker room, and I, I won't say who, they said, you know what, Darkfire really came on strong in the second half. His ring performance, Darkfire's ring performance really came on strong. So, I mean, I ask you the same question. How do you feel like 2022 went for you here at WCE? I think it went great, actually. Very great. I have to say that my performance has improved a little bit. Well, more than a little bit, I should say. I, um, yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Does that give you – well, okay, so does that give you confidence going into the offseason? You know what? Yes, I know the stuff with Crenson that happened. Yes, I've, I've had my, my skirmishes in the ring with other people. Let's say Craven, obviously – 16th mm -hmm. anniversary match with Sean Jovi. But you know what? My ring performance improved. My fellow wrestlers in the locker room know that. The fans know that. Management has seen that. And you know what? That gives me something to build. In some ways, you have a different offseason maybe to look upon to than a Sean Jovi because Sean Jovi's got it in different ways. So give me your thoughts on that. Well, um, my thoughts, uh, I hope that I can become a better wrestler next year and then become champion. Well, what championship would you uh, prefer? Obviously, we've got two titles. And oh, you yeah, can certainly... kind of I prefer the uh, interstate. Hmm. Okay, well, you know what? That could be a title that maybe uh, might be uh, more attainable at this point. And I do want to get to our guest who will be with us here, maybe in about a half hour or so, maybe, maybe a little more than that. That is, of course, the new Messiah, Nicholas Crenson. And to give his due dark fire at fight or fright was a lot tougher of an opponent than he was at beat the heat. What do you say to that, dark fire? 
I think that's true. Yeah, um, uh, at Beat the Heat, I, I felt like I wasn't I wasn't at my best, but at Fight or Fright, I was at the top of my game. Yeah, I feel I kind of feel like the same. And I'm just going to give my take on it because I've obviously gotten a chance to watch all of you in the ring. And certainly it might be different because I'm obviously not a colleague. I'm not somebody that's kind of a, somebody that's kind of competing for some of these spots. And, and I really did feel like your ring improvement, what impresses me most about you in the ring is your agility, what you're able to do in there, and, and kind of your kind of versatility in the ring. So I think that your quickness speaks well. You're not like the most quickest, let's say like a Kodak kid or a Dash Andrews, but you're also able to hold up very well. And I, and I think that that could certainly bode well for you here in 2023 for sure. And the resident rock star, Sean Jovi, I did also want to promote you also on something that I, I know we really want to promote and because it's kind of a way part to WC. It's your own YouTube page. We're up to 513 subscribers right now. And certainly uh, you were definitely uh, quite the rave. You were certainly uh, quite the uh, craze. And uh, talk about the uh, YouTube page and certainly uh, why and where people can subscribe and uh, tune in to follow your journey. Sure. Um, my, I do vlogs every week. So, and, and I do, I have old matches on there from 2007 up throughout many promotions throughout the Midwest that were backyard. Um, Indiana Championship Wrestling comes to mind. That was a big one in my career. Um, there's, I have all my matches from there. I have everything from other areas, other backyards, other territories in the Midwest. On top of that, I got my old stuff. I got, I got a lot on that channel. And actually tonight, after this broadcast and after Crenson gets off the air, I plan on a live streaming on my account, the new Pokemon game. Oh, is, no, I, one of our buddies, Steve, one of my buddies, Steven Solanke. I believe just got the game because he posted on Instagram. So we'll make sure that uh, it should come up we'll... midnight around your time, eleven o'clock my time. So okay. by the time you get off the air with friends and I should be starting the stream. So well, I invite you all to get over there. Hang well, out with means... me. I will. You know what? Actually, that'll probably be when I'm eating my uh, lunchtime meals. So that's I, I'm on a weird schedule. But uh, and where can we find you on YouTube? Um, you can look me up. Just look up Sean Jovi Selby. I'm not hard to find her. It is Sean Jovi. Not too hard to find. Um, my profile picture has like a camera lens that says Jovi's vlog on it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen. I've seen the, yeah. uh, the, the so music it, stuff. It should be easy to find. Um, I know they're doing handles now or something. Yep. That would be at yep. RCW Rules, R-U-L-Z. I also have a Facebook fan page that also posts the vlogs and stuff in case you don't follow it enough on YouTube. And that's just uh, Facebook.com slash Sean Jovi, I think. Well, I, I believe that's the case. And I also, before I get to Dark Far, I actually want to thank everybody because Sportswire Radio just reached the 500 follower milestone. So I really appreciate everybody that's followed Sportswire. So it's been a, uh, it's been a grind. It's been a journey. But uh, I was always told in life that uh, one day at a time, one person at a time, and exactly. we'll continue to do that. But um, I want to ask you a quick follow-up question on some of the matches that you've had. And obviously, I want to bring you back on before the end of the year and talk about some of those matches and kind of go down memory lane with it because I think that would be a kind of cool thing to do. But oh, when you wish you... Yeah, we're going to definitely do that. And when you were shooting matches, let's say, and kind of similar to the Darkfire question on the 16th anniversary show, but let's say like 2007, 8, 9, did you ever think that on YouTube you'd have hundreds of subscribers that would be watching these matches? So, you know what? Yeah, I really want to check out Sean Jovi. I mean, walk me through that mindset when you're recording these matches 10, 12, 15 years ago. I mean, I just, just feel curious about that. I mean... 10, 12 years ago is a lot different era than what we live in now. Oh, it's a to totally different world. It's a totally yeah. different world. Yep. So, like, um, as a 16, 17-year-old kid just getting into this backyard scene, messing around on a trampoline, it was hard. It was hard to get started. Nobody really cares for, like, the trampoline or backyard stuff that I was in back in the day because we were just kids messing around. We weren't, we weren't like suplexing people like crazy or anything we were just doing we were just kids trying to have fun recording for kicks and giggles and if we get something out of it we get something out of it i've always been a fan of video production and like how things are made and i'm i actually taught myself everything video editing that i've learned pretty much on my own wow 
I mean, no, that, no that's classes, very, no nothing. I you know, just, what, that's very go. difficult, man. You know what? And I took one class on video editing, and I'm not a great video. I am nowhere near what you did. So what you were able to pull off, I could definitely appreciate that very much. So there's no question that uh, you know you certainly uh, you know have your uh, support there and make sure everybody follows. And you know, Darfire, I want to come back to you, and, and I know obviously we're just getting to know you. And your journey, and I kind of wanted to ask you this question, and I haven't really got a chance to formally ask anybody. And I'm kind of thought about it as we're kind of shooting the breeze here on Sports Wire Radio here, talking wrestling championship entertainment with the resident rock star Sean Jovi and Dog Fire. I mean, Dog Fire. I mean, how did you say, you know what, I want to be a professional wrestler? How did I want to get into this business and and be the big star that you are right now? How did I want to get into this? Uh, I'd have to thank Sean Jovi for it. He recruited me back in the day on RCW when we did RCW. He's like, "Hey, you know, I'm doing this thing, uh, backyard wrestling thing. You want it? You want in?" And I'm like, "Sure. We'll see what happens." And here we are, years later, still wrestling. It's a very on and off journey too, because like Dark Player, what would you say? Like after RCW folded in 2010, you didn't really. Hardly wrestle with us at all after that. Not really, no, not so, really much. Because around that time, I was expanding my horizons and going to other yeah. backyard gigs in the Midwest, in Illinois, and in Indiana. I think I did one in Ohio at one point. Yeah. But, and in that time, Darkfire was pretty much living out his life. But when WCD came calling, I, I was the first one to knock on his door and say, hey, I got an opportunity for you again. And I appreciate that, Sean. Thank you. And look what it's done for you. It's done a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're here right now, right? We're speaking live about it. We're speaking about the journey. And, you know, since you kind of brought it up, Sean Jovi, I don't think I had a plan, but I almost had to ask because I find it so fascinating that you kind of talked about it. I don't think in a, the other couple of times we had you on, we really got a chance to speak about that. But you've wrestled in different places like Ohio and Indiana and Illinois and you know, we do a lot of wrestling coverage on Sportswear Radio. You know, thank God we have a massive following for it, certainly places in England and these different little towns. And I mean, what is the life then like of a backyard wrestler to, to wrestle in these different places? I mean, what's that journey like? Because I, I kind of find that a journey that we really haven't got a chance to maybe speak about here on Sportswire. I mean, kind of talk me through that. It's, it's an experience. <laughs> a very good experience, though. Um, so basically the whole traveling thing started this federation that was on trampling the same time I was on trampling Indiana championship wrestling, which I mentioned earlier. I was very fascinated what they were doing. I found them on YouTube and I was like, Hey, wouldn't it be cool if I got to wrestle on trampling with these guys? So I reached out back on MySpace. That was I remember MySpace. I do remember MySpace. <laughs> oh, I barely, I, I'm starting to forget about it, but that's where well, it I, I go back to the days of like Live Journal and what was it, uh, Meat Spot. I mean, I'm, I'm a, like a tad older than you guys, so I rem definitely remember those days of the early, early social media world. Oh, this, this next part I'm going to tell you is going to blow your mind then. So when I talked to Devin Bliss, one of the wrestlers for ICW at that time, he told me to go on this website called GBYWN. It stood for Global Backyard Wrestling News. And it was a forum for backyard wrestlers around the world to discuss backyard wrestling, professional wrestling as a whole, set up shows to where everyone can meet up and hang out and wrestle. And I've done plenty of those myself. Pretty much all the traveling I did from 2009 to like 2010 or 11 was straight up super shows. Whenever people and other backyard feds wanted to come together and do a super show between all these backyard feds across the country. I was there. I wanted to be there. I thought it was cool. And I was very inexperienced at the time, but I wanted to just be part of it. I just liked the community. And I, I would say like Indiana championship wrestling did a lot for me in that aspect. They welcomed me into their family when they resurfaced in 2017 and they had a ring that I came back instantly. They asked if I wanted to join for a show or two, and it became a little bit more than that. There was also uh, another fit I was in, Midwest Wrestling Alliance, that was based out in Illinois. I 
uh, like Chicago area. And that was a big one, too. I had plenty of fun matches there. Actually, I uh, wrestled the guy who I got my finisher from. We had a match for who had the rights to the finisher. I went, I won. So the DOA wow. that you see in my moveset set yep. was, was formerly known as the Markout by a man named Mark Reconcile. And he, it, was very, it was a very good match, and it was hard fought to earn that DOA a, uh, spot for a finisher. That's pretty uh pretty neat there. You you never know what you can learn here on Sports Wire Radio, and you know I want to change the subjects and come back to WC for a little while. We got about another twenty or so minutes here with uh, Dark Fire and the resident rock star Sean Doby. And again, if you like what you hear from Wrestling Championship Entertainment, please give WCE a follow at Wrestling Championship Entertainment on Facebook, WCEHeat.com, and. My name is the Reverend Tom Bryce. And if you like what you hear from us on Sports Wire Radio, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, you can listen to all of our great content on sportnarium.com slash player. And also continue to like us on Facebook at Sports Wire Radio. We've just reached the 500 follower milestone. So thank you, everybody, for that. And also, next Saturday evening, we'll be back here with more wrestling championship sort of coverage, I guess, or. Somebody that JDT had mentioned, and, and his name is James Zayden. So he's going to come on here next Saturday and speak about his wrestling journey and speak about some of the things here that uh, I think Mr. JDT has said. So we'll get his perspective on it. And I certainly look forward to hearing from this individual who has reached out to us here after what JDT has had to say about him. So tune in here to all of our platforms. But we do have some more comments before I get to Dark Fire. This individual who we think we know says, hello, Darkfire. <laughs> and also, this individual who we may or may not know says, Darkfire is a great wrestler. He had a great career in wrestling championship entertainment. He's a hard worker in the ring, and he's a future breakout star. You know, Darkfire, before I get to the Kodak Kid talk, that is kind of what I've heard about you from different guys and gals in the locker room over the past few months is that you're a hard worker and you're like right there. You're almost like on the cusp, but it's almost like you're like Austin theory without the uh, personality almost. Hopefully you don't, don't not cash in the money in the bank. I mean, hopefully uh, you don't blow that, but uh, <laughs> you, you kind of feel that also, do you kind of feel like that the tide has changed for you? The tide has turned a bit. Well, what was that? Sorry. I said, do you feel like that the tide has turned for you and kind of how people perceive you and kind of like how people look at you right now in terms of going into wrestling championship entertainment for the future of your career? Oh, yeah, it definitely has changed. Yes, I have to say it definitely has changed a little, uh, a lot. All right, well, I, I, let's hope it continues. Let's hope that it certainly builds. And, and I want to speak about things here that I think everyone's been to talking here in the world here. It's not even just in WC, but also in professional wrestling. That is, what happened to Kodak Kid? And certainly, uh, Kodak Kid took a uh, beating for the ages. And, you know, I got to ask you guys about that. I mean, so uh, Dark Fire, I mean, what was your impressions to uh, what happened with Kodak Kid? We certainly spoke a little bit about that. Last week on the show with uh, JDT and, and Craven Rage, and uh, I mean, uh, what was your impressions of that? Very tragic, emotional, bad. I miss Kodak. I miss him very much. And, and I saw that you guys actually, especially you, Sean Jovi, had almost, I guess, the uh, the funeral for uh, Kodak. <laughs> kid, if you want to call it that way, I mean, uh, so, I, I don't uh, know. I, I it was. I did it more of as a joke. Kodak was in on it, so <laughs> he was like, "Well, since I'm injured, you might as well just write me off and say I'm dead." I'm like, "All right, we'll, we'll do a vlog on that." <laughs> well, certainly, a dead man walking would be the uh, case here. And before we get to your vlog, <laughs> Kodak's for harmony making of my vlog. Well, certainly, uh, before I get to the uh, Sean Jovi thought, I want to get into one of your supporters that says, oh, my God, it's Sean Jovi. What's up, my big dog brother from, Ra is it Racine or Racine, Wisconsin? Uh, Racine. Racine. Rac Racine, Wisconsin, yours truly, quote, the Antichrist forevermore. So certainly, uh, Antichrist. yeah, Jeez. smoking the, the BZ for my awesome friend, Sean Jeezy, LOL. I, I think I know who this individual is now. Now that I, I, I got the hint, so I certainly will uh, say that. And uh, I guess changing topics real quick. What is Racine, Wisconsin like? For, for a guy like me in New York who knows very little about Racine, Wisconsin. 
I don't What's know. it like? I don't know nothing about it. I've seen it all. We're actually uh, from Green Bay. We're actually from Green Bay. Okay. Well, yeah, what's, Green Bay, Bay. Well, what's Green Bay like? I mean, I know Lambeau Field. I mean, I always kind of always have a vested interest in rooting for the Packers because of you guys, really. But, I mean, oh, yeah. uh, you know, what's Green Bay like? Um, well, when the Packers aren't losing, it's a lot happier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah definitely. I don't know what the score is now. I turned it off yeah. before we went on. But, uh, I mean, it's – it's it, Green Bay is a very interesting place. There's not a lot going on. Nothing. Like it's not like a major city where there's always something to do. But we have our own amusement park. We have Lambo. We have we have many. Um, what are the words? Breweries. Different, yeah. There's a lot. There's really a lot cool. of bars and stuff like that. It, it's a very hop in town and definitely uh, rated in the top drunkest countries in America. You mean? So yeah, okay. All right. It's statistically proven. Well, that's pretty cool, and, and I almost have to ask, and I'll probably make you guys chuckle, because I always, I heard this years ago, and I've always kind of been curious, now that I speak to you guys, and you're from Green Bay, are you guys actually, by chance, stockholders or owners of the Green Bay Packers? Because, you know, the Packers are actually a, a publicly owned team. I mean, are you guys actually stockholders by any chance? Um, I think my dad is, and he might well, have okay. stock in my name. I know my dad does, and there might be stock in my name that maybe he didn't tell me. I don't know. That's pretty cool. Okay, that's pretty I mean, cool. If you didn't tell me, that's probably smart because I would have sold it a long time ago. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. And I did, obviously, I did admire the uh, Packers uh, trading cards that you had in your most recent uh, vlog as well. So I will uh, give you a nod for that. And certainly, it has at least been a good run for the Packers the last 30 years. Because for us here, yeah. I, I tend to lean more for the Jets than the Giants. I won't bring up Giants Packers playoff pass, but uh, oh, Jets, I was uh, at that game. I think fig- I figured that was going to come up, but uh, certainly, uh, <laughs> certainly being somebody like my- myself who kind of leans toward the Jets, there really hasn't been much home to write about at all, uh, to yeah. say the least. But uh, Nicholas Crunch is going to be here with us in about 15 or so minutes. His Kodak kid will more than likely be back. Honestly, Craven is a smart man, but now he gave Kodak a reason to not hold back, and that makes him a moron. Do you agree with that, the resident rock star, Sean Joby? I feel like right now Craven Rage is a little bit for the first time on his heels. I'm sure Kodak Kid one day will have something to say, and I feel like JDT has certainly uh, made Craven Rage kind of uh, think a little bit that uh, he's got some uh, competition here a little bit right now in WCE. I think Kodak has all the makings of a big star. If there's one person who could call themselves a face of a company, besides me, I would think Kodak would have a run for my money. His popularity definitely spiked before his injury and before he was taken out. It, it's a shame because he was really on the rise. I yeah, we had a lot of differences, yeah. but at the end of the day, I definitely respect him as a competitor, and I've earned and I he's earned my respect for him as a person. Absolutely. And what? And I have to ask you that as a follow up, and maybe I'll ask Doc Fire the same question here. I mean, what did you make of management's decision? Basically, I don't know if it's tied toward it or not, but management's decision basically to say JDT and Craven Rage cannot touch each other at all right now, basically until they, if they ever square foot in the ring. What, what's your thoughts on that? I mean. Not my problem. <laughs> fair enough. Listen, fair enough. I mean, I mean, sir- they're both big, scary competitors in their own right, and I, I wouldn't blame them being separate. Blame management for separating them. They're both scary competitors. Like, I wouldn't want to get in the middle of that if oh my God. I'm not wrestling. You know. <laughs> well, Darkfire, you you certainly stepped foot in the ring with Craven Rage, and certainly uh, he has been certainly the rage here of WC. Obviously, he has been basically. He's called himself the ruler of the yard, the goat, the greatest of all time, and and he's definitely uh, you know shown that he's had certainly the year that many people would love to have, not just in WC but in the wrestling world. But I mean, uh, I guess I'd have to say then, I mean, uh, do you think management made the right decision? I mean, you've been in the ring with Craven Rage. I mean, uh, you think that uh, that uh, Craven and JDT, it, uh, they shouldn't be uh, crossing paths at all anytime soon, or what do you think? No, they shouldn't. They're dangerous men. With titles. With titles. <laughs> I think that's the other reason why they shouldn't touch each other. To like go face to face. They're both champions. 
And we don't need someone walking around with three belts. Oh my god, no. It's already bad enough that let's not do. give it let's let's not give management some ideas here. Let's just not give management any more ideas. Listen, let's, let's certainly not do that. And uh, Mr. Crenson has to say, it's a smart move by management because you don't want your two top wrestlers, your two top champions, risking taking each other out because then you can lose one or both of your title matches. And then also, dark fire for WCE president. I mean, dark <laughs> fire. Are you, are you running for president? I mean, would you want to run true. for WCE president? What? 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 Would you want to run for WC President Dog Fire? I mean, you want to put your name out there? I mean, uh, no. people might might get behind you here. No, I wouldn't run for president. No. Well, for WCE president, how about that? Would you want to run for WCE president? I mean, uh... maybe. All right. Well, you know what? You never know. Never say never, as Vince McMahon used to famously say it. JDT looks like he bites people. Keep him in his cage. <laughs> Well, the, he's the chairman. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. JDT right now is on quite a run. But I'm going to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for a few more minutes with the resident rock star, Sean Jovi and Dark Fire. And certainly what a action-packed interview that has been here on Sportswire Radio and different things here that we're talking about. In about 10 or so minutes, we will hear from Nicholas Crenson, the new messiah who always has a lot to say, and I am the host of the Sports Report and the station manager of Sports Fire Radio, the Reverend Tom Bryson. The resident rock star, Sean Jovi, I wanted to ask you, is there maybe from this year, I know it's been a big year, it's been an interesting year, it's been a colorful year, and certainly another time we'll talk about some other favorite matches you've had throughout your career. Maybe go down memory lane and we'll, we'll kind of talk about the match and you can pick it out with me and, and we'll do that for sure. But was there one or two maybe moments that stood out most? You know, if this was the year in 2022 that made the year stand out for me, is there one or two moments this year you think it stood out most for you? Easily. And the biggest one was the three doors down match with Craven Rage. Yeah, I came up short. Yeah, I didn't win. But the three doors down match was actually a match I invented. It was the first time idea like I've had. And I was like, you know, I'm a resident rock star. I like rock music. Why not make a match revolved around some rock and roll? So what I so what I do, I ripped off three doors down and made a match out of it. <laughs> it was fun, but like, I don't know, it was a weird idea, but it actually worked out, I think, a lot better than I thought. Having the three doors and then not have pinfalls or submissions until all three are down. And I like that idea because it gives the fans excitement because you know at least three doors are going to be broken in this match. Guaranteed. Indeed. Before any winner is declared. And that's why I creatively picked that. Now the match with Craven, I would say that's probably my top three or four matches of all time I've had. As far wow. as performance-wise. You got to bring up As much as I don't care for Craven as a wrestler, and as much as him and I have had our feud in the past, I will say he is he brings out the best in me, absolutely every. Time. Yeah, I, 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 and I know that Nicholas Crenson talks about James Marshall, Catalyst. Certainly, that was a match that we kind of referenced in kind of what ifs here in terms of when you look back with COVID. But there is something about you and Craven. There's just something there. It's almost in a way like you guys complement each other. In a way, it's almost like again, it's, it, I think about as a kid the the Bulls and the Knicks, or I think about. Yeah. In, in sports, I think about the Packers and the Bears. I think about there's certain rivalries, there's certain feuds, Yankees, Red Sox. I mean, you think about certain certain feuds, Blackhawks and Blues in the NHL. I mean, there's just certain feuds or certain rivalries, Michigan, Ohio State. You guys, in a lot of ways, are almost like that Wisconsin and Michigan, another example for our Wisconsin fans here. I mean, so there's something there about you and Craven Rage that it has to be revisited, but... For you, Dark Far, I want to ask you the same question. I mean, is there a moment or two that stood out most for you and said, you know what, this is what I'm going to remember most about 2022? Um, probably my 16th year anniversary match with Sean. That's, that's another one. one of mine, too. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. It's a great one. I think that's a match we're going to certainly, and that's kind of why I think it's the most emotional match at WC this year. I also think it kind of shows why. You guys are almost like the meat and potatoes of the company, where you guys are really kind of like the glue that holds everything. You guys are so important in, in a lot of different ways that maybe goes beyond 
championships. And I have to ask you guys a fun question here before I get to closing thoughts. And what was it like for you, Sean Jovi, being in a corn maze? I mean, I had to ask because I'm from New York. <laughs> I, I, I had to ask. Like, I'm from New York. Right? Good I, I was just all day today in Brooklyn, New York. I grew up in Brooklyn. I live in Staten Island. So I, I'm the farthest thing from a corn maze in, in Wisconsin, right? So yeah. I have to ask, right? I mean, I, I can well, be as much thing. as a- I'm as much as a foreigner as anybody else in this case. So what's that like walking through a corn maze? I have to ask. Yeah, honestly, this was my first corn maze I remember going through. Since oh, wow. Well, okay. All right. So you're, I'm since I was a kid, um, a couple of my friends that are also big fans of WC, we uh, we decided to meet up. We were going to we were gonna shoot a vlog, and we are like, hey, let's just, hit a, let's just do something fun for the season. For, best thing we could come up with is a corn maze. So we searched and High and low for a corn maze around. Closest one was like, a, I think, a half hour out from where I'm at. Wow. Yeah, we drove around aimlessly looking for a corn maze. Yeah, we did. It, it was pretty It was pretty crazy. But the corn maze itself was interesting. It, it's kind of weird. Just basically, you're entering this maze, and the only thing around you is just stocks and stocks and stocks of corn. Can't And, they, and what they do is they plow paths. So, like... There's like a pathway so you can navigate through it. Otherwise, all the corn stalks are like a neck and neck, you know. You can't really navigate through it otherwise. So you end on one end, go through the other. Honestly, the maze was not that hard, and I'm kind of disappointed in that. We found the exit with only hitting a couple dead ends, if I remember right. Pretty much the whole maze was on the entire vlog. I barely cut any of it out. No, I, I, it was so fascinating because my first thought was, um, I think was it was it Super Mario Brothers three? I think was a corn maze. I'm pretty sure that was one of the early early Mario games that had a corn maze. But I'm like saying, wow, this guy didn't get like scared. He didn't get like. Nervous. I mean, there's really nothing scary about a corn maze. I mean, at night maybe that they have ghouls popping out, but <laughs> it's not really a haunted house per se. It's just kind of like a fall activity that people like to do for fun. Is there like a tourist attraction where you guys are, or is it that big? Is it big of a deal, or um, in general, or just just in general? Yeah, just is it a big deal? Like corn mazes? No, not really. Not really. Honestly, I haven't heard about one of those in a million years right. until it got brought up. Well, I, we'll just... I had to listen. I had to bring it up, and certainly right. Nicholas is Clark... a big thing here. Farming is a big thing. Wolverine. <laughs> I think people of Nicholas Krentz and I, I know will be here in a few minutes. And Sean Jovi is the best rock star of wrestling championship entertainment. And with his history in the ring, he will rise to the top of the side. Well, there's no question that Sean Jovi's got quite a resume. He's got quite a history. And a number of wrestlers here in this company have quite a history. But the resident rock star, Sean Jovi, may very well have one of the most interesting histories of them all. And that's why we're certainly very, very delighted to have had him back here on Sports Wire Radio alongside Mr. Dark Fire. So certainly, gentlemen, I know you guys are getting ready for the Pokemon stream, and Nicholas Krenson is going to hear shortly right afterwards. So, Dark Fire, I want to go with you first. I want to give you the floor. I want to give you some closing thoughts. Anything that you'd like to plug, share, say, anything toward, let's say, fans of WCE or anybody else that's watching or listening and hearing you for the first time? Uh... <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Let me think. Hmm. Well, I'm lost. I'm sorry. Well, I'm, get, I'll make you feel nervous. better. I'm, nervous. I'll I'm, make you nervous. Feel, get, I'm, I'm gonna nervous. make I'm you nervous. feel better, dog fired. I was telling you guys this here before we get to closing thoughts. There's two thoughts. The first one was I'm at a bar last night, not too far from where I live, and and I'm speaking to a girl that I, that I fo- we follow each other on Instagram. We kind of know each other, acquaintances, right? She goes, you. I said, yeah, me. She says, you know, you're a podcaster. You're the guy that speaks to all these wrestlers, all these wrestlers in wrestling championship entertainment. I watched the one with Sean Jovi and the one with Craven Rage and like, wow, what's it like speaking to them? I said, well, you can go and follow them on Facebook at Wrestling Championship Entertainment, WC Heat, and make sure you follow them. And today I was at someone's house for a meeting and this little woman her name's Tina, but Tina Knorr, who if she's listening from Marine Park in Brooklyn, goes, you know, I'm a fan of wrestling. And I said, I didn't know that. She goes on and says, well, I watched 
WCE wrestling championship for the team. And I was watching some of these guys stuff. So you know what? You never know right. out there. So get right. over your nervousness. Let your heart not be troubled. As Ronald Reagan used to always famously say in John F. Kennedy, a rising tide always lifts all boats. And your boat is going to be lifted, Darkfire. So let your heart right. not be troubled. Next time, you'll have much more to say. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that we'll talk about some other memories and moments because I do think it's going to be a very, very big year for you. And we thank you for this opportunity. The resident rock star, Sean Joby, a man that certainly has plenty to say, as always. Certainly, I want to give you the floor, give you some closing thoughts. One more time, plug your YouTube page so we can go get more followers. Also, buy some merchandise. I'm going to make sure... I buy a shirt that Sean Jovi has on because we want to support Sean yeah. Jovi. All the great I mean, I things. I not in production anymore, but it's an old one. Well, well there are shirts on, on, on the Oh, yeah, they're out there. They're out there. Make sure I'm you buy them. I'm making new ones for next year, too. But I want to give you the floor. Anything else you want to plug, share, say? And I can't thank you enough as always. And I know we'll have you on here before the year is out and talk about maybe we'll talk about that off the air, about a match or two that you want to review with me. And we'll do that throughout the offseason. Pick out some of the collection, the archives. And floor is yours, my friend, and fire away. All right. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you, Tom. I'd like to thank the fans of WC and Sportswire Radio for giving me the time to uh discuss all this stuff it's been great please be sure to follow me on facebook uh facebook.com slash sean jovi you can follow me there here as well just search sean jovi it's the jovi's vlog picture same thing with youtube just search sean jovi or sean jovi stelby you'll find me easily i'm not hard to find <laughs> And this is the Jovi, ladies and gentlemen, that you want to follow. This is the Jovi. That's the future. We love Bon Jovi. But always, we want to make sure we support Sean Jovi. So we're definitely not living on a prayer with the resident rock star Sean Jovi. We are definitely keeping the faith with wrestling championship entertainment. And we are definitely going to get wild in the streets because it's the life of Sean Jovi. I really tried my best to... That was a good one. Listen, I was off the fly. I basically worked in as many Bon Jovi references as I could. So I have to say, I was listening. That's to awesome. Guys, but for you, we'll definitely do anything. But one more comment before we get to Nicholas Crunton. People have to remember, Dark Fire set a record with the most views in match wrestling championship entertainment history. That's and he was set 2,300 well, views. Well, what, is that, what does that mean to you, Dark Fire? Means a lot, actually. Uh, the most viewed, one of the most viewed matches in WC has. What did you say, Jovi? Uh, uh, twenty three hundred views, I think. Last I checked, twenty three hundred views. Yeah. And honestly, I would say that was your best match too. That was my best match too. Yeah, like Sean Jovi said, it was my best match, and yeah, I was impressed. I was blown away by how many views it got. I really was. When you have something like that, uh, there's people from all over the world that are watching the content. This isn't just WCE fans. You're talking about 2,300 plus views. That's a large audience. Not many yeah. people can say they've had that kind of success. I mean, I have one interview out there with a boxer that was a world champion. That I think might have just got that many, maybe. But not many people can say they've had that kind of support. I mean, right. you know, you, you must get asked a, a lot about that dog fire, no? Uh, no. No, I don't really. I don't. Well, by the way, you know what, what we just did for you, so certainly uh, I'm sure somebody else will one day. But, uh, oh, yeah. gentlemen, I want to thank you here for this opportunity. We'll certainly speak thank more. Thank you for the opportunity, thank Reverend. You. I appreciate My it. My pleasure. And Sean Jovi will get you back on here for more coverage of your matches. We'll go down memory lane with and. We'll definitely tune in 12 o'clock to make sure we catch the Pokemon stream. And we're going to yep. let you run because you got to prepare for that. So we thank everybody for having Sean Joby, the resident rock star here in Dark Fire. And I am the host of the Sports Report and the station manager of Sports Wire Radio. We are going to now bring on the new Messiah, ladies and gentlemen. With <laughs> Brother, I do here on the Sports Report. Hey! Number one, the level spot show. He is the number zero. Nicholas Crenson. My friend, 
How are you? I'm doing good, Reverend Tom. How are you? Uh, we'll see how my voice holds up in about 50 or so minutes. Because that's like the seventh time I've done that. I was in a bar last night, and people were asking me, wow, how do you do those intros? And I wound up doing like 17 times over. So we'll see in about 50 or so minutes. But uh, a lot to get into here with you, my friend. Obviously, Dark Fire, you heard some of those comments. But uh, I want to get into the video last weekend first that you cut on the Wrestling Championship Entertainment page, where you basically kind of went off and certainly uh, went to town. And certainly, uh, I think it kind of gives the springboard of maybe where we're going to here in the off season and talk about the video and the inspirations and uh, some other things you might want to add toward it. So the video that I just released, right? Yeah, this past weekend, correct. Look at my weekend. Look at my weekend back at Fighter Fright. I I might maybe the most successful weekend of anybody. Back to back big wins. I tapped out on Donatilios. I choked out Darkfire. And I I after the match with Darkfire, I literally looked in the camera and I said to both James and JT, I call next. No, no, no. And it's it's not a fact of Oh, I think I, I deserve that shot because I won both matches. No, I deserve that shot because I'm the toughest guy in in WCE right now. I am the most dangerous man in WCE right now. And to be fair to our our uh, new interstate champion, I'm the only one who left him lying like a corpse this year. Let me ask you a follow-up question because you certainly make some interesting points and, and you might even make some valid points there. Do you feel like, let's say, ending this year here in 2022, you're the guy that is in the position to even dethrone, let's just say, not even JDT, but even Craven Rage? Because, I mean, you certainly... And I'd asked you this question in the past, and, and I feel like it, it might even be more prevalent now. And I, I probably have a answered my own question, but I feel like right now you're going into the off season with all the momentum right now. I mean, if JDT goes in the ring with you, or even a Craven Rage, but especially a JDT, maybe his run is going to end before it even starts. See, and here's the funny thing. I do have all the momentum right now because of those two victories, but also it's because I I am focused on one thing, and that's becoming a champion. And right now, JDT is the champion that I'm choosing to target. Craven, don't worry. I'll eventually get to you again. And honestly, I have to thank Craven for this because – Back Wait, at banking, banking rage? we had that match, and it taught me that I wasn't digging deep enough. It told it taught me that I needed to really reach down deep and pull out a part of me that I thought I had dead and buried. And it took that. It took those battles with James Marshall. It took. All, all these things just piling on on top of each other to make me realize that if I want to win, if I want to be on the top, frankly, I just stop giving a damn and go after everybody I want. Interesting that you thanked Craven Rage there. Interesting. But I want to go back to something, and I wasn't going to bring it up, but you kind of said something that was interesting there. So I want to get your thoughts. JDT... I'm sure you heard in last week's show, this was his first singles championship in his 25-year career. Hmm. The last time you won a major singles championship, correct me if I'm wrong, was just about 16 years ago. So I would have to think that the motivation... January 21st, 2006. I was 17 years old. Okay, so we're talking, like I just said, about 16 years ago, right? 16 plus years ago. So my point is, is that after seeing JDT win his first singles championship in his 25-year career, you've got to have even more motivation than you've ever had before to win a title. Because if JDT did it, 
I mean, I guess you got to be next, no? It's not just winning the title. That isn't good enough for me. It's never going to be good enough just to win the title. For me, it's always going to be, I want to be considered a champion. And a champion is somebody who can hold on to the title as much as possible. And that's where JDT is going to face his real test next season because he's got it. That's the easy part. That's Getting there is the easy part. It's keeping yourself fair. That's the hard part. You know, it's funny you said that because I've often heard that a lot, whether it's somebody who gets to the top in the music world or somebody who gets to the top in the political world or any other world, that getting there is great, right? You all make it. But then to stay on top takes a lot. It takes a lot more than and you realize. And, and I kind of think JDT, in a way, was kind of feeling some of that heat when we mentioned James Aiden and kind of that background. We didn't even know much about this guy. And JDT, for the first time, he seemed like he saw a ghost. And before I get to James Marshall's comment, I mean, uh, maybe JDT's not so much worried about you, but he might be worried about a guy, James Aiden, who, by the way, Nicholas Krentz, the new Messiah, he's with us next Saturday night on Sportswire Radio. So I think JDT, you know what? <laughs> maybe he won't even make it <laughs> to pass the offseason. Who knows? Of course, there's another James. There always has to be more than one James. People like uh, being named James, I guess, right? James is a popular name. The problem with me, and JDT is going to very seldomly learn this, is I can read people. And as soon as you mention that name to him, I already have my, my ammo on him. I already have my ammo on JDT to push his buttons to get get his get him in the ring for a match for the title. I you know I already have that ammo with the fact that I have him beat in one on one competition in a last man standing match. So he you know at some point he's going to want to get that win back on me. But also I don't just target one person i will target their entire life and you know somebody stole his chair lovely who cares <laughs> honestly that's just child game compared to what i can do hmm. and all right i will get my hands on jdt again and i'm not going to be dumb and you know, braggadocious and say, oh, I guarantee I'm going to win. No, I'm going to beat the living hell out of him. And, hey, I think I'm going to win, but I don't guarantee it. Because, honestly, if you guarantee something, you're more than likely not going to You know, I'm glad you did bring that up. Because, you know, all too often in sports, I've seen all these different players that say, yeah, I'm going to guarantee a win. And before I get to James Marshall, I never forget as a little kid growing up, in Brooklyn, I was a New York Knicks fan. And Patrick Ewing famously guaranteed a win against Shaquille O'Neal and the Orlando Magic. And what did the Knicks do the next day? They lost. And all the New York tabloids said, what was this guy Ewing doing? Guaranteeing a win for the Knicks and they wind up losing. So that was maybe the smartest thing you've said all season. I think I'm going to win, but I can't guarantee you win. But let me get to James Marshall, catalyst. Obviously, Mr. Marshall, of course, who was our reigning defending interstate champion for quite a while and somebody that you have had quite a war with in the past. He says, well, 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 read between my index and ring finger. We'll maybe cross paths again. Maybe you cross catalyst's path. Either way, people will tune in. You know what? I agree. I, I have to think. Maybe the match I, I enjoyed most this season, now I'm thinking about it, was you and him in, in the Iron Man match. I have to say that was... Uh, people said, oh, the Three Doors Down match and uh, other matches that came to mind. Obviously, even JDT and Craven most recently and JDT and Marshall himself, Catalyst. and I mean, your match with Darkfire even. But there's a lot of matches I could go on. But, you know, that might have been the match that... I kind of think in some ways had the most maybe meaning to it for a title. I mean, what do you think on that? Honestly, that was my toughest, toughest match this year. And James Marshall catalysts, uh, either one are tough opponents. I will say I do 
worry more when I have to face James Marshall than I do with Catalyst. Um, but tell me why. Tell me why that is. <sighs> Catalyst is Catalyst is the one that comes out when he doesn't have to worry, when he doesn't need to go into desperation mode. When James Marshall is the one you're facing, you know he's taking it seriously. Like when James Mar when you're facing the unhinged James Marshall, it's best example I'll give you, and this is a you know considering he's about to retire soon, is KG Muto and Great Muda. And, and like you know, we so we know Great Muda came into U.S. all the time. Yeah, yeah, sure. The Great Muda. Muda the Great Muda in Japan was saved for like the most desperate times for KG Muto. It's kind of like Demon Sin Balor. That's another one you could give it. Okay. The like, American it, it's kind of kind of funny Muto. though because Catalyst is the calmer of the two with the mask, and the actual James Marshall is the one that is the more violent of the two. Hmm. Interesting because they certainly both have their strengths, but maybe in some ways you could certainly see why one would favor the other. And I want to bring in an individual that may or may not know some talent in WC. Says, well, as a huge fan of Craven Rage, I have to say Nicholas Crenson, the so-called Messiah, he isn't strong enough to bring down JDT. What do you say toward that? When somebody just now says, you know what? Yeah, Nicholas Cranston, he's a strong talent. He may or may not be the new Messiah, but regardless of whether he is or isn't, he can't knock down JDT. I mean, I guess the one way you can look at it is Craven struggled to get through JDT, but what would that mean for Nicholas Cranston? See, Craven struggled. I, last time I fought D JDT, I came out on top. Good point. Good point. Like, like J, and I, you know, that's not not knocking JDT. JDT is one tough sob. He will hit you harder than anybody. He will bring everything to the table to to beat you, and that's actually what makes it so so intriguing for me because. I'm going to bring everything to the table to, to beat him event and get that title. Whether, you know, I I, I will become a champion sooner rather than later, and I will go through hell to get that title. And I'll also put people through hell to get, get the title. <laughs> but I have to ask you a question, and, and you're right. You've beaten JDT, and you do have that. They always say that you have a feather in your cap, and you almost – mentally you have the advantage right psychologically you have the advantage i always think about when we were in college if you, if you were in college and you took psych psychology they'd always say psych 101 that would always be if you were in there with somebody you've basically got them basically right where you want them but i mean how much have you watched though that craven jdt match back i know we've spoken about it off the air but i kind of feel like watching the match that i saw it's a different JDT than the one you faced. Now you're gonna say, I know, I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna to say, Tom, it's a different Nicholas Crenson in terms of what you've done in the ring since. But I mean, Craven Rage, there was points in the match. He was like, Do you go down? He was like, What gives? I mean, so how, how much have you gone back and watched that match and maybe kind of figured out what you may need to do differently? I didn't just watch that match. I've watched every JDT match that happened this season. I watched his his toe strap match with Kodak. I watched both his matches with Dash. I rewatched the last Man Standing match. Uh, re, you know, I watched. I've watched the TLC over and over again. And but the one that I I keep going back to is the match where he beat beat J, beat James Catalyst for the title. Yep, that was the last match of the year. That was literally the last match of the year in WCE. Because he, yes, he is the chairman. He is, you know, he likes to carry that 
chair around. I also like to call him a mechanical mercenary because he's like a mechanic in the ring when it comes to tech technical skill. And I like that because it, it gives me something to pick apart. It gives me something challenging to destroy. And Watching his matches back, I know, yeah, I know, you know, the when I eventually face him in the ring, that it's not going to be the same JDT I faced in that last man standing match. Just like he knows the the Nicholas Krenzen that he gets when he faces me in the ring again isn't going to be the same he faced in the last man standing match. We're just going to kick each other's butts and beat each other senseless until one of us is left as the champion and once i get that shot he's he is in for his toughest fight i don't don't give me anything about you know no no down the knock to them but craven james you know eventually you know john jovi will probably get it kodak no i'm going to be his toughest fight because i'm going to i am going to pick him apart both physically and mentally well, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I think that this comment certainly very well might speak for itself in that the new Messiah, Nicholas Crenson, will win a belt next year. It's his time bet. I would certainly not want to bet against Nicholas Crenson. And James Marshall certainly has something to say. I do have a match with Sean Joby that is under contract to happen. Also, I have a rematch clause to challenge JDT. Maybe hit two birds with stone next season. I'll talk to management and commissioner Mark Packer about those. I mean, just to kind of get your thought on that. I mean, if you're James Marshall, do you go to jo Do you want Jovi right away, or you do order? Do you automatically go rematch clause? JDT, what do you do there? That's a tough one. You know. Probably. If it were me, I would wait on the rematch clause. I would wait. You know, here's the reason why I would wait. I would wait because JDT, you said it a few minutes ago. You said it very well. JDT, now he's champion, but it's going to be very tough for him to stay on the mountain. He doesn't know what it's like to be on top. He's going to have people coming for him left and right. And so he's not going to hang on from what you said that long because... He's got James Zayden now, who he's terrified of, right? He spoke about him. You got Marshall out there waiting in the wings. You're waiting out the wings. You said you got next. You know that Dark Fire, Sean Jovi are going to make their cases. I mean, there's pretty much a litany of people that say, you know what? I want JDT. Craven's shown that he's been the man. He's the guy. He's the ruler. But this JDT guy is his first singles title in 25 years. What does he know? 25 year chip on the shoulder. Yeah. That he he is at this point where now that he's champion every he's really going to get to learn where the real hell of being a champion is. It's like you said, everybody's gunning for him now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, listen, there's no question that look, congratulations to him. And certainly it definitely meant a lot. We saw the mutual respect that, that he and catalyst had, but I mean, it's going to be very tough for him to stay on top here because everybody's coming for him. Everybody's gunning for him. And let me get to another comment. But honestly, even though you won the match against JDT, Craven Rage destroyed Nicholas Crunson and has wrecked, conquered, and smashed everyone. And there's no one, and especially self-proclaimed Messiah, can bring down a champion. I think Darkfire can accomplish what others fa have failed to do from you of all people. You're, and I know I knew that was coming. I mean, what you've said about dark fire, what you've shown to prove about dark fire, that last part's got to certainly ruffle your feathers a little bit there. The new Messiah, Nicholas Crenson. Uh, 
right now, and Darkfire can do what he wants. It's just as long as he stays out of my business. You know, Craven can do what he wants as long as he stays out of my business. Once he makes, once either of those two make me their problem, um, Craven, yeah, he he destroyed me. He destroyed me at the beginning of uh, of this of the last season here, mm -hmm. but. I'm not the same person I was back then. I learn from my mistakes. I learn from every loss I have, every victory I have. I learn from every match I have. The reason why I call myself the new Messiah Backyard Wrestling is because I'm an ever-evolving state. I am an ever-evolving being when it comes to what I can do in the ring. So... Darkfire, just stay out of my way for the, for now, and we won't have a problem. Craven, you want a problem? I will murder you this time. You want me in the ring? I will murder you. And then finally, JDT, be prepared, because once I get that title shot, you're going to experience hell on earth in the form of my elbows my kicks my punches and my technical skill because i am going to get my shot and i'm going to bring the best fight to you you've ever had i'll tell you what ladies and gentlemen extremely strong words here tonight once again on sports wire radio from the new messiah Nicholas Krenzen, and I am the host of the Sports Report and the station manager of Sports Wire Radio, the Reverend Tom Bryson. If you are on Facebook, continue to give us a like on Sports Wire Radio at Facebook. And I want to thank everybody again because, as I pointed out earlier in the show, we recently surpassed the 500 follower mark for the Sports Wire Radio page. So I want to thank everybody for putting us over that milestone. It's a tremendous accomplishment. I want to thank all of our supporters throughout the world here. We'll also be back tomorrow afternoon and evening with wrestling coverage from our friends over at KOW. They're getting ready for their 10th year anniversary show. And get this match. We're going to have a knockout or tap out match between the natural born fighter, R.P. Davis, who, by the way, was a boxing star in the UK, a boxing world champion, against the Ronin, Brian Adenson, who looks like he could have been either an MMA or a boxing champion but he's a big-time wrestling star. They're going to have a match, which arguably I think could be the main event in any company. So we're going to speak with RPD literally just 24 hours away from that. So I want to make sure everybody tunes into that. I also want to make sure everybody tunes in to our friend, the resident rock star, Sean Jovi, in about 25 minutes because he's going to have a brand-new stream for the brand-new Pokemon game which I know that the new Messiah, Nicholas Krenzen, will have a vested interest in. So we're going to make sure we get him off the stream so he can check out that stream. I'm going to check out that stream. If you're here on Facebook, you need to be checking out that stream. You can do that by searching Sean Jovi. You can also do that by searching WCE Heat, which you can do for YouTube. Facebook at Wrestling Championship Entertainment, WCHeat.com, and we are going to have coverage throughout the offseason of Wrestling Championship Entertainment, and I'm excited about it. So should you be. We are going to be speaking with literally everybody there is, and we are speaking right now with the new Messiah, Nicholas Krenzett, and James Marshall says, better than Butterbean? I don't know. What was the reference here in better than Butterbean? What did... uh? I have to ask here, what was our reference to what's better than Butterbean? Butterbean, a uh, tough band competition. Right, I know. I, he was in WrestleMania 15. I, that I know. He knocked out. He had basically ended Mark Merrow's wrestling career. But I was just curious, and what actually are we saying better than Butterbean for? That was my point. I, I'm well aware no, of I'm... Eric Esch, a.k.a. Butterbean. I don't know, but, but I guess he'll let us know. But um, JDT has a big talk. And has, that's exactly what we spoke about from the very beginning with you and even with Sean Jovi and Darkfire. Well, as a fan of Craven Rage, I know that Craven Rage will definitely make you fall to him again. Uh, I mean, look, we'll find out. I mean, I'm, I'm sure somebody out there is going to certainly want to see you and Craven Rage get out there in the ring. And something tells me, I'm sure, Craven Rage is going to have a thought or two on that. But I wanted to sh switch gears here while we have you for a little while longer. And, and I'm sure you've heard about this video 
that was posted out there on social media through Wrestling Championship Entertainment's channels about the attack on Kodak Kid and everything else that went on about it. And, and I know, obviously, you didn't really have anything to do with it. It really wasn't involving you. But just curious, you know, what your thoughts were on that and just uh, kind of how it all unfolded. <sighs> How do I say this? I, I mentioned it in a comment earlier while you had Jovi and Darkfire on. Craven is a smart man, but he is probably the dumbest smart man I've ever met. Because <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've been in the ring with Kodak. I know Co I know Kodak. I've been with in the ring with Craven. Craven, I took it easy on you. And so was it Kodak's brother also? Shut your you mouth when you talk. Also, I'm pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I think I heard you say that on one stream with Kodak's brother as well, correct? Uh, I was in a tag team with Kodak Kid's brother, Dandy Dan. Yep. That's my point. Um, but here's the here's the here's where uh Craven is a, is a moron. He looked <laughs> him in the eye and he basically kind of let Kodak know who was doing it. And you give a kid motivation to hurt you. Like before it was just about, you know, for, for Kodak, it was just about being a champion. Now Craven has a bigger target on him when, you know, cause knowing Kodak, he's, he's going to be back. I, I know him, but now Craven has a bigger target on his head because Kodak's not coming back just for the title. Kodak's coming back to basically get revenge on Craven. And, you know, if he thought that Kodak was his toughest opponent, like at, for when he was just going, just trying to win the championship, imagine what it would be like if you make it personal, you make it not about the title you give Kodak a reason to want to hurt you, then you've got to worry. Especially if you don't know what you're dealing with. And Craven might think he knows what he's dealing with, but trust me, he has no idea what he's in for. That's interesting. It's just a waiting game now. It's interesting because I think for the first time, just like how we spoke about JDT and James Aiden, we've seen... In a way, Craven Rage may be on his heels for a little bit for the first time because now Kodak Kid eventually, right? We're assuming one day, right? Kodak Kid is going to want to get his due, his just. Then we saw JDT, what he did to Craven Rage and kind of standing for as long as possible. So maybe, just maybe here on Sports Wire Radio, we have our two champions, but they're going to certainly have a long off season where they're going to have to ponder these scenarios. And James Marshall says, making quesadillas and heard someone has a good boxing fighting background. So to answer that question again, James Marshall, I would have to say that RPD, the natural born fighter, RP Davis in terms of butter being two totally different fighters. But I would say that RPD has definitely the better boxing background, even though butter bean could throw a punch, maybe a little better than RPD. But RPD and his agility, his quickness, how he can move, would probably have a little bit of the edge. But they're two totally different fighters. But yes, RPD was a boxing star in the UK. His, his father actually was a boxer and a trainer also. But that's here nor there. You can listen to that tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon here in the United States. It'll be 8 o'clock British Standard Time. But James Marshall says, we can agree on the same thing, Crenson. Craven is a smart idiot. How can you be a smart idiot, though? Wouldn't that just make you an idiot? You can be a smart person and still do dumb, dumb, dumb And you stuff. wouldn't be a smart idiot. You would just be an idiot, no? Because even smart people make mistakes. And True. really, Craven, Craven made the biggest mistake. Like, you know, I even admit when I when I faced Craven the first the, the first time I faced Craven, I made the mistake of taking him too lightly. That ain't happening again. Okay. All right. I, I, I could certainly see why you'd say that. I wanted to ask you this question though. And I asked obviously Craven this question. I had also asked Dark Fire, Sean Jovi, and I'd asked a wrestler a couple of days ago in the UK, this question, and I'm sure 
I'll ask everybody here throughout the year, and I'll probably get you on, I would imagine, one more time before the end of the year. But to be safe, I want to ask you this question. How did you feel your overall 2022 win for you in WC? Honestly, I'll say this. This is probably one of my my best years in wrestling just because I really got to challenge myself and do things that I never thought I could do again. Okay. Um, like, you know, this is 18 years for me and next year it's going to be 19. And really, uh, for me, I think my year went well. Like it didn't end it the way I like to, but you know, I ended on a high note. I, Tapped out Adonis Filios. I choked out Darkfire. I will eventually get a shot at JDT. And hey, maybe eventually I'll get a shot at Craven again. I don't care if he has the belt, really. I just want to fight Craven because I want to beat the living hell out of him. <laughs> but honestly, 2022 was just the beginning. Because we've got, you know, we've got 2023 to to come we've got we got stuff like luck of the draw we've got our our we got vindication we got ring destruction too we got you know the second anniversary show we've got all these wonderful shows next year and our talent pool is just getting bigger and bigger which means more people for me to beat up which i love that idea i'll tell you what i mean that's an interesting way to put it, and obviously the talent in wrestling championship entertainment is second to none. As I've continued to say, this is the best roster in all of professional wrestling. Listen, WWE, AEW's roster, MLW's roster, Impact's roster wishes they could have the kind of talent that we have here in wrestling championship entertainment. It is second to none. And James Marshall also says Craven made the same mistake of going easy on Craven last year. So Catalyst. May have made the same mistake, but that's certainly that Catalyst will have to answer that. And I'm sure that Catalyst will be on here very soon before the year is out. But talking about some of the things that you did and obviously how you felt about the year. So I'm going to ask you going into 2023, how do you use this as a springboard to have an even better 23? Simple. Cause as much mayhem as possible and make it so everybody remembers 2023 as the year of Nicholas Crenson because I I will get my chance at the title. I will get my chance to show everybody why I call myself the new messiah and I will get my chance to walk out a champion at some point because really next year it's just hitting the gr ground running and I'm going to go all out next year to get everything I want. Well, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, certainly uh, it is a strong, strong case that Nicholas Crenson has made that 23 is going to continue where 22 left off. I would definitely feel confident about that, considering what we've seen, especially toward the second half, the end of the second half from the year of the new Messiah, Nicholas Crenson, that, listen, whether I'm Catalyst, whether I'm JDT, whether I'm Craven Rage, whether I'm anybody else, Sean Jovi, you name him, Nicholas Crenson, very well, could be the one that knocks him all down. And I did want to ask you, in terms of, I mean, was there a moment or two that maybe stood out most this year for you? Really, there's there's two things that come to mind. And those two things... Uh, actually, three things, actually. All right, um, I'll give you three. Go ahead. All right. And that's... Uh, and that is... The last man standing match with JDT because that was the first time I ever faced JDT in the ring. And I, even in that match, I, he, he was one of my toughest opponents. He, he definitely was. 
the match with the match with Craven just because it made me realize that I cannot take people lightly. And then finally everything that happened with James Marshall, because we, as much as I hate him, I, I also, I, you know, love the dude just because we bring out the best and the worst in each other. Every time we get in the ring with each other and it's, it basically is the, the to steal a phrase, iron sharpens iron. We make each other better and more violent in the ring. Well, I'll tell you what. You certainly make some strong points. And Catalyst made the same mistake of going easy on Craven last year. And I am sure that that chapter has not been written here. And I did want to ask you very quickly when it comes to Craven and JDT, and, and I know you think you might have commented on this, but I'll ask you, especially since you're here with us on the stream, and we've got literally but another five or ten more minutes with you because I know we have the big Sean Jovi Pokemon stream that we all want to make sure we get out there and watch because it's a <laughs> brand new game. and oh, It's the new Pokemon game. I have to give him credit. He's got 513 subscribers. We want to support him. But, I mean, what did you make of what management's decision was where basically Craven Rage and JDT can't touch each other until they're in a ring? Smart move. And really? A few times you'll, you'll hear me compliment Mark Packer and management because, really, if you let your two chop champions go at each other and one or both get injured – you lose your title matches or you have to, you know, scramble to crown a new champion. Really? Those two should be as far away from each other for the time being, because one, nobody needs to hold, no, nobody needs to hold all three of those belts. You know, I am glad you said that because I believe that was the same point that I think Darkfire had made you and Darkfire, yeah. I think rarely agree on anything. And that was another point you just did. Like the champions are already in a competition with each other to to you know up their belts in general. You know, they'll eventually face each other. We you know, that's always a given. But really let them focus on their own thing, their own championships right now. Let them build their championships. Craven Craven's got, you know, the the Universal Grand Slam Wisconsinite, which I think we should change that because really he's built up that belt so well this this past season, and you know, to the point where you know once he does finally lose, he is going to uh, whoever whoever beats Craven for the Wisconsinite title is going to be a big deal deal, and as for the Interstate Openweight Championship, that's a belt that I've been. I, I, you know, I was a part of the unboxing for it. I was a part of the, you know, of everything kind of coming together to this, to when we were designing belts and the, with Scott, the interstate title where it's prestige comes from is in the, in the, not just the quality of the matches, but how hard everybody in every single match went for that belt to make it mean something. Craven's done it with the Wisconsinite. Me, James Marshall, JDT, Dark Darkfire, Kodak, we've all John Jonathan Pierce, our first champion, we all went all out this season to build that championship up. Just like how Craven, JDT, John Jovi, Dark Fire, Adonis Filios, those guys built up the Wisconsinite to the point where really both titles are seen as equal. Yeah, I, I don't feel like it's it's where both those two are. It's almost like the WWE will have obviously the, the world titles, and you'll have either the intercontinental title or the US title, or I don't get that sense. I, I kind of feel like at the end of the day that Craven and whether it was Marshall or now JDT. They're able to stand on their own and say, you know what? These guys are champions. They're champions for a reason. That's why we support them. And, well, to be honest with you, Craven, Craven Rage is waiting. And if you'd like to see that, I mean, it almost reminds me of uh, the uh, John Wick 3 line in the movie where it says, be seeing you, Mr. Wick, real soon. 
Could Craven Rage be waiting to see the new Messiah, Nicholas Crenson, real soon? I don't know. Stay tuned. We'll Let's certainly see. find out. And Craven Rage has the whole world in his hands. I guess Craven Rage is now quoting what Bray Wyatt here from a, a promo from a few years Craven back. Craven Rage might be the ruler of the yard, but I took I walked into his yard and took a dump. Ooh, boy, the new Messiah, Nicholas Crenson. He is certainly throwing darts. He is throwing darts. Starts out here tonight on Sportswire. It has been a rather eventful and impactful Sportswire radio show. We heard from Darkfire the first time, who was certainly very mild-mannered, but he certainly had his moments. The resident rock star, Sean Jovi, who, by the way, we are just a few short minutes away from that brand-new stream that we have to all go out there and watch on his YouTube. Sean Jovi, Sean Jovi, <coughs> Selby, to please go out there and support. I have to ask you, is there anything that you want to say to anybody in the back that's watching or listening to this before we speak with you again? Sure. <coughs> Craven, I will eventually face you again, and I will eventually beat the living hell out of you. JDT, you, you told me this to get back and stay in my lane. No, I'm not staying in my lane. I want the interstate championship. I want a shot at you again. And JDT, <clears throat> if I have to, I <clears throat> will target you on a psychological level. James Marshall, I hate you. I love you. I know we're going to face each other again at some point because our fights are destined to go on forever. And Darkfire, Adonis, anybody who, who thinks about <clears throat> stepping up and getting in my way, please, please think before you act because otherwise I'm just going to destroy you. And I've already done that to both Adonis and Darkfire, so... Well, I tell you what, Darkfire, maybe he was mild-mannered because of what the new Messiah Nicholas Crenson did to him. I don't know. Adonis Felios, nowhere to really be found tonight on Sportswire Radio. So certainly it seems like a new look. Is it the mustache? Is it the new Messiah? Is it the shirt? I don't know. I think the, most, the facial hair looks good on you, by the way. I, I do think that Darkfire maybe should have kept his facial hair, and you should keep yours. But, hey, what do yeah, I know? To be fair... Right? <laughs> to be fair to Darkfire, when he has a beard, he looks like Sami Zayn. Yeah, yeah, I, he he does look. Actually, he does look much more uh, like he should not have facial hair. There are some people that look like they should have facial hair, and other people that they shouldn't. But hey, you know what? Each to its own, right? Uh, each to its own. That's why we all love WC. James Marshall says, "I did urinate in his yard," and I'm laughing my ass off. Uh, yeah, he he might have, but. You know, that's here nor there. And this individual says, Craven Rage will make Church of Christ and sing, sing like a schoolgirl. Ooh, boy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I tell you what. It's getting hot here on Sportswire Radio. It is getting dicey. And dark fire is feeling oozy. <laughs> uh. Well, I, I don't know, though, if Sean Jovi and Darkfire would be confused for the bloodline any way possible. I, I don't think yeah. that uh, that'll be. But I'll tell you what, James Zayden and JDT might be convinced or might be seen as the bloodline, but going the other way. And I think next Saturday, live on Sportswire Radio, we're going to find out, I believe, around midnight Eastern time. Why JDT may have a lot of problems on his hand and why his run of champion very, very well be short lived as can be. But I know we're all getting ready for the big stream. I know you're, you have it on your mind. I have it on my mind. I want to give you the floor, give you some closing thoughts. Anything else you want to plug, share, say anything you want to get off your chest. Certainly you had a bang out. Last show of the year, you certainly go into 23 with all the momentum, as good a momentum as anybody can have here in this locker room, maybe even more momentum than Craven Rage here. So 
For you, my friend, the new Messiah, I turn it over to you. The floor is yours and fire away. All right. Firstly, Craven, I will eventually see you again, but right now you're not my concern. You're a second nature to me. JDT, I'm going to get my title shot. And as for your friend, um, I hope you realize that uh, you're, you are you you have now just by association put your friend in the line of fire because I'm going to target anything and everything to get you in the ring. And don't worry. I'll make sure it hurts because I don't just sit back and wait. I am one who plots my actions. So, JDT, you, your poker face slipped when Reverend Tom mentioned James Satan. So now I know your Achilles heel. <clears throat> so eventually, I'm going to use that to my advantage. JDT, I'll see you in the ring. Boy, I tell you what, I think things got really interesting tonight on Sportswire Radio. We certainly ran the gauntlet when it came to wrestling championship entertainment, but I've learned one thing here. The landscape is ever-evolving. It's always changing in wrestling championship entertainment. And Nicholas Krentz is right about one thing. He might very well be next. Next in line to take a championship because JDT might have won his first singles title in 25 years. But I think that the new Messiah, Nicholas Krenson, could have his first major singles title in 17 years. It very well only be a matter of time. And something tells me here somebody is feeling oozy. But the new Messiah, Nicholas Krenson, might have had the best last two shows of anybody could have had, not just in wrestling championship entertainment, but of all the professional wrestling. And again, before we get out of here, if you like what you hear from wrestling championship entertainment, please continue to support them. WCHeat.com, also at Re wrestling championship entertainment on YouTube, WC heat on Facebook. We'll be back next Saturday night with James Zayden. We'll have a lot to talk about with him, his journey. I'm sure JDT is going to be watching that. Or maybe not watching it. He might be running away as far away as he can. And we'll certainly find out more of that. We'll also be back here live tomorrow with the natural born fighter, R.P. Davis. who will have a lot to say about his war, his knockout or tap out match of knockout wrestling's 10th year anniversary show against the Ronin Brian Nains. And it'll be here on Facebook at Sportswire Radio at Tom Bryce, YouTube at Sportswire Radio. Also, subscribe to our YouTube page at Sportswire Radio. Also, sportnarium.com slash player for more information. So, Nicholas Kratzen, my friend, we hope to get you back here one more time before 23. Certainly, you've laid the case that, you know what, you might be the guy to dethrone JDT, but also JDT's got his own problems. So does Craven. Maybe things between you and James Marshall are still unresolved and Dark fire certainly on the run from you. So happy Turkey Day. Happy Thanksgiving. And we certainly look forward to speaking with you soon. And, and enjoy the Sean Jovi stream as we all will. And uh, thank you as always, my friend. You're welcome. And nice being on here, Reverend. You got it. As we're here on sportnarium.com slash player. And if you are on sportnarium.com slash player, you go back to your regularly scheduled programming. We'll be back here again tomorrow as well. And we've got the notification from Jovi Club Gaming that the Pokemon Scarlet launch stream has begun. So thank you, everybody. So if you're a WCE fan, go over to Sean Jovi stream. Go watch it. Like it. Support it. Support this man. But also support Nicholas Cranston. Support James Marshall. Craven Rage. Friend them on Facebook. Friend these great wrestlers. Find them. Find out why WCE is the number one wrestling company around. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I am the host of the Sports Report, the station manager of Sportswire Radio, the Reverend Tom Bryce. And we'll be back next week with more wrestling championship entertainment and more coverage on the number one go radio station that is sports wire radio <laughs>